the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. We thank you, O God, that you have again brought us together on the Lord's Day to praise you for your goodness and to ask your blessing. Give us grace to see your hand in the week that is past and your purpose in the week to come. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, as we turn our hearts and minds to worship Almighty God, let us confess our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Merciful God, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have created the heavens and the earth and ourselves in your image. Teach us to discern your hand in all your works and to serve you with reverence and thanksgiving. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. taken from the book known to us as Exodus. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them 
whether they will follow my instruction or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what are we that you complain against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening, and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked towards the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew upon the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface on the, of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. Hear the wisdom of the Hebrew Scriptures. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for this morning is taken from Psalm 105. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders, and the judgment of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, O children of Jacob, his chosen. He led out his people with silver and gold. In all their tribes there was no one that stumbled. Egypt was glad of their going, because they were afraid of them. He spread out a cloud for a covering and a fire to give light in the night season. They asked and the quails appeared and he satisfied them with bread from heaven. He opened the rock and water flowed so the river ran in the dry places. For God remembered his holy word and Abraham his servant. So he led forth his people with gladness his chosen with shouts of joy. He gave his people the land of the nations, and they took the fruit of others' toil, that they might keep his statutes and observe his laws. Hallelujah! God of our salvation, through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, you have fulfilled your promise to our ancestors in the faith to redeem the world from slavery and to lead us into the promised land. Grant us the living water from the rock and bread from heaven, that we may rejoice our desert pilgrimage and praise you forever. Through Jesus Christ, our, Lord, our Redeemer. Amen. A reading from the Christian writings taken from Paul's letter to the church in Philippi. For to me, living is Christ and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I prefer. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy and faith, 
so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel, and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them, this is evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation, and this is God's doing. For he has graciously granted you the privilege not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well. Since you are having the same struggle than you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay beginning with the last, and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, 
but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, Those lost worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. This is the Gospel of the Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I want you to pause and think about how this story makes you feel. This parable that Jesus is telling of the workers coming into the field, into the vineyard at at different times, and yet all receiving the same rate of pay. Does it make you angry? Does it make you happy? Does it make you feel like there's something wrong, that there's an injustice here? Or do you feel exactly the opposite, that justice was done? And I think in some ways the way that we feel when we hear this parable has something to do with understanding our own position in life. But also I think it has a lot to do with who we identify with in the parable. If we think about ourselves as being those early workers, we may come up with a very different answer than if we think about ourselves as being one of those late workers. Or the manager or the owner. So who do you identify with, I think, says a lot about how you feel when you hear this. But let's think for a second about how Jesus's original audience would have heard this. Because most of the people in Jesus's audience, they would have been these workers. The standard workday was from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And for that, you received a silver denarius. That was the usual daily wage. And realistically, it was just enough to keep keep the family housed, clothed, fed. There was no trip to, to Disneyland or anything like that. You'd work 12 hours a day, six days a week, because you got the Sabbath off at least. But you worked 72 hours a week just to keep your family fed. This was not, you know, I'm working 72 hours a week and I'm working my way up. No, this is, for a lot of people, for most people, this was their life was working 72 hours a week, physical labor, for as long as they could. And when they were physically unable to continue to work, hopefully they had a child who would take them in and feed them. But that's really what life was like 
for most of the people in Jesus's audience. A couple of generations earlier, their families had owned farms. But drought, but taxes, but illness, but premature death of the breadwinner. It was very easy for a family to end up in a debt trap so that they would not be able to pay back money that was borrowed against the family farm. And so people moved from being landowners and subsistence farmers to being workers and mostly workers on a daily wage, a daily contract. And if you did not find work that day, well, you had to go back to your family empty handed. And nobody wants to do that. So what would those people, those people who lived this existence, who had been the workers who did not have a job at 6 a.m. and were thinking, oh no, and got hired at nine, or got hired at noon, or got hired at three, or got hired at five, only one hour left in the, in, in the work day, but maybe I could at least bring something home. Maybe the day is in a complete loss. Maybe I can put something on the table. I think they would hear this message as one that was full of good news, of hope. I think they'd be saying, yeah, I want to live there. I want to live in that kingdom of heaven. I want to live in that kingdom of God. This empire that I live in where I'm paying taxes, where I'm barely, barely managing to keep my family fed. That one where even if I only got a part, even if I only got one hours of work, at least I'd be able to still feed my family. Sign me up. That is good news. I want to live in that kingdom. After all, the ones who had worked the full 12 hours, they didn't get cheated. They got to go home with a full day's wages too. And the ones who got hired at nine, or at noon, or at three. Everybody, everybody gets the full day's wages. Everybody gets to go home and bring what the family needed to keep fed, to keep alive. Now just pause for one more second and listen to the story again and hear it with that. Hear it with that understanding. Hear it from the position of one who has had to go home and tell their family that there's nothing for that day. Hear that story and imagine yourself in the position of one who is unable to get the full day's work and yet is still able to bring home the full day's pay. And remember, the full day's pay was not luxury, it was not excess, it was not you know, trip to Disneyland money. It was we eat type money.
This parable, I think, really challenges us to think about the world in which we live and the world in which God calls us to live. And I think the more that the world in which we live begins to resemble the world that God calls us to live in, then that's the work of the kingdom. Then that's the work of God redeeming the world from the brokenness of human greed, human selfishness, human empire. To be in that realm of divine justice, divine plenty, a divine kingdom of God. You and I and they and all. God has invited us to join in God's kingdom. That's good news. Let us confess our faith as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. of the people. We have no right to be envious of the generosity and mercy God shows to others. Let us come with openness to express our concerns to the church and the world, to the God of compassion and gracious understanding. Loving Father, whenever we start to get offended by your generosity or open-mindedness, give us the grace to repent and join your rejoicing. Guard the church against self-righteousness and all rules and limits which you would not own. But keep always before us the rule of love. We pray for Todd, our bishop, Linda, our primate, Anne, our metropolitan, Kristen, our archdeacon, John, our regional dean, Raymond, our rector, our wardens, parish council, and all parish ministries. We pray for our brothers and sisters at Canon Davis Memorial, St. Paul's Point Edward, St. John the Baptist, Walpole Island, Christ Church and Holy Trinity, St. Paul's, Chatham. 
Church of the Ascension, Comber, St. Peter's, Moravian Town, and for our companion diocese of Amazonia in Brazil. Not our will, but your will, Lord, be done. Loving Father, increase in us love, not only for the victims, but for the perpetrators of evil and violence in our world, for all governments which run on corruption and fear. We pray for a change of heart and attitude, an awakening to a better way of things, and the courage to reject wrong principles. Not our will, but your will, Lord, be done. Loving Father, may our closeness to family and friends make us never exclusive, shutting others out, but always inclusive, welcoming others in, encouraging us in outgoing hospitality. Today, in our parish cycle of prayer, we pray for Gary and Shirley Work, John and Pat Wright, Tim Wright and their families. Not our will, but your will be done. Loving Father, we pray for all offenders in prison, that on release they will not be re-offend, re but find enough support to start a new life in the community. We pray for all who are vulnerable and unable to cope with the demands of life, and for those whom we know that have a special need to feel your healing touch in their lives, and whose names we speak now aloud or in the silence of our hearts. We pray for alcoholics, drug addicts, and all who are sick in mind. We pray for proper, compassionate help for them. Not our will, but your will, Lord, be done. Loving Father, we pray for those who have died alone, unmourned and unnoticed. We pray for those who have committed suicide or died in accidents of their own making. We commend them to your merciful love. Not our will, but your will be done, Lord. Loving Father, thank you for helping us to pray. Deepen our loving so that we may pray through this week, we may do it with your heart of compassion. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us praise our Savior taught us. in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the Church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace, and believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> 